Hi guys, welcome back to my studio. Today I want to show you how I made these fun little bowls. I actually made these for a Mother's Day gift for my mom. I gave her three of them since she doesn't need all of them and the rest will be posted on my website next time I restock. And now onto the actual project. To start out with, I mixed up some white slip by adding my dried out clay scraps to water. Yeah, this seems like a weird place to start, but we'll get back to this later. It just has to sit and slake for a while, and I'll explain when we get to that point. Then it was on to throwing the bowls. I generally use white stoneware clay, but I had some darker clay left from another project, so I used up the rest of that for this project. I started by measuring out a bit over a pound of clay per bowl and wedging it up. You'll notice I'm wedging on a piece of cement board instead of right on my wood table like I normally do. Uh, that's because this red clay gets everywhere. <laughs> so I have a board set aside just for it so I don't get my white clay stain next time I use the table. Once I wedged up all the balls, it was time to throw. This is one of my favorite parts for sure. I knew I wanted to keep these bowls pretty rounded on the bottom with no foot ring because I felt like that would fit the overall style of the bowl and would be nice to hold. I'm making these small enough to hold with one hand, so I wanted it to have a nice rounded feel without making it tippy, of course. So I threw these with a bit thicker base to allow me to trim them with a rounded bottom later. Other than that, I threw them like any other bowl, just keeping a rounded overall shape in mind. These are really pretty. I like the look of the clay, I just don't care for the cleanup. I suppose it doesn't really get more messy than my normal white clay, but it sure feels messier being bright red. When I finished throwing them all and put them out on my table, the sun was lower in the sky and it almost made the bowls look like they were glowing. I wired off and flipped the bowls when they were leather hard and then I got back to that bucket of slip I'd left to slake for later. I told you I'd get back to that. The dried clay scraps and water have now turned into slip and so I just stirred it up and then strained out any remaining chunks. I left this fairly thick so I could paint it on the inside of the bowls with fewer coats. I used this under the glaze so the glaze would be more vibrant like it normally is on my white pottery and not muted like it would be straight on a dark clay. The colorful glazes I have on hand are translucent so they wouldn't look nearly as colorful without this step. Once the slip was all ready to go, I trimmed all the bowls. I mostly rounded them but left enough of a flat spot on the bottom so they would sit flat and not be tippy. I smoothed each bowl with a chamois as well so they would have a nice smooth final result and feel nice to the touch. This was especially important as I'm not glazing the outside of the bowls. I also carved each bowl differently, just a simple design on the outside rim area. I like the added details and I just like carving. Once they were trimmed, I added the white slip to the inside of the bowls only. This step it really isn't obvious in the final product just looking at it, but it made the glaze so much more vibrant than it would have been without it. I repeated the trimming, smoothing, and carving steps with each bowl and then added the slip as well. Then they were all ready to dry. This step would take quite a while in the winter, but we're heading back into summer, so it wasn't too long, only a week or so. I dried them first right side up while the slip dried a bit inside and then flipped them upside down to finish drying. Then they were ready for their first trips through the kiln. I accidentally bumped this bowl on the way into the kiln and it did not make it. Thankfully, it was on the way into the kiln and not on the way out, as I can still reclaim the clay at this point. It's just part of pottery. Always make extras. The rest of the bowls, minus the broken one, made it just fine out of the bisque kiln. Then I glazed them all in as many different solid colors as I had. I used Amico Celadons on all but one. I like Amico Celadons because they do very well over texture, which is what I normally use them for, but they're also just fun, vibrant colors, so they work great for this too. I did three coats of each glaze on the inside of each bowl and left the outside unglazed. Then I loaded them back into the kiln for a glaze firing. I really like glaze firings in particular as they kind of feel like magic since they come out looking so different than they went in. Yeah, it's chemistry and a chemical change brought about by high heat, but the magic idea is so much more fun. Yeah. 
And then they were done. I picked out three bowls I particularly liked and three different colors, of course. Wrapped them up and gave them to my mom for Mother's Day. She was so surprised that I made them for her and super happy too. She's a big fan of bright colors, so these were perfect for her. Check out my website to buy my fun pottery. The link's in the description. And check out this fun video too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.